Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Shivanila. Today's topic is nasopalatine cyst. It is also called as nasopalatine duct cyst, incisive canal cyst, median anterior maxillary cyst, and vestigial cyst. Nasopalatine cyst. It is most common epithelial and non-odontogenic cyst of maxilla. The cyst originates from epithelial remnants from the nasopalatine duct. It may occur within the nasopalatine canal or in the soft tissue at the opening of the canal where it is called as cyst of palatine papilla. Etiopathogenesis Developmental It is developmental in origin. It arises in the incisive canal where, when the embryonic epithelial remnants of the nasopalatine duct undergo proliferation and cystic transformation. Trauma in the form of direct blow to incisive canal or indirectly from mastication, particularly when ill-fitting dentures are involved. Bacterial infection. Either from nasal cavity or from oral cavity, infection stimulates the epithelial remnants to proliferate. Retention phenomenon. Blocked duct of mucous glands causes an accumulation of secretion which would be responsible for the cystic expansion. Clinical features, age and sex, it occurs in 4th and 6th decades of life and edentulous patients. Males is to female ratio is 3 is to 1, that is it is more common in males. Onset, there is a small well defined swelling just posterior to the palatine papilla. Pain, sometimes it may become infected producing pain. Burning sensation, numbness may be experienced due to pressure on the nasopalatine nerve. Salty taste. Patients complain of salty taste in mouth produced by small sinus or remnants of nasopalatine duct that permits cystic fluid to drain into the oral cavity. Fluctuant. Swelling is fluctuant and bluish if it is near the surface. Palpation. Open by a tiny fistula on or near the palatine papilla. A tiny drop of watery fluid or pus may be elicited by pressure in this area. Surface. Deeper cysts are covered by normal mucosa unless it is ulcerated. Expansion. If cyst expands, it may penetrate the labial plate and produce a swelling below the maxillary labial frenum. Teeth. Roots of the central incisors diverge and it may bulge into nasal cavity and distort nasal septum. Cyst of palatine papillae Sometimes, cyst formed in palatine papilla will be evident as an elevation or a soft round swelling of palatine papilla which extends posteriorly along the midline of the palate. It occurs anterior to the incisive foramen, below the periosteum and do not enter and invades the underlying bone. Complication. In some cases, it is reported that it may lead to malignancy of maxilla. Radiological Futures. Radiographs show well circumscribed radiolucency in midline of anterior maxilla. The lesion was apical to the roots of the maxillary central incisors and appears to abut the mesial surfaces of both associated lateral incisors. The radiolucency has a round or ovoid or heart shape due to the superimposition of nasal spine. No root resorption is noted. Cysts range in size with an average diameter of approximately 1.5 cm. Histopathology The nasopalatine duct cyst is lined by stratified squamous epithelium alone or in combination with pseudostratified columnar epithelium with or without cilia and or goblet cells. Simple columnar epithelium and simple cuboidal epithelium may be seen. The fibrous wall generally contains nerves, arteries and veins. Additionally, minor salivary gland tissue and small islands of cartilage may be found. Finally, if the cyst was infected, acute and chronic inflammatory cells will be seen. Differential Diagnosis Incisive Fossa the shape of the fossa varies from round to oval to triangular to diamond to funnel shaped. Radiolucency in the area is less than 6 mm wide and should be considered as a normal fossa in the absence of associated symptoms. 
Incisive fossa sharply defines at the lateral margins in contrast to the cyst, which has a well defined boundary on all margins. Aspiration will help you distinguish between cyst and incisive fossa. Next, radicular cyst. Pulp is non vital with loss of lamina dura in the radicular cyst. Next, dentigerous cyst with mesiodense. Radiographic evidence of association with supernumerary teeth will establish the diagnosis of dentigerous cyst. Next, median palatin cyst. Radiolucent lesion is behind the incisive canal in premolar molar area. Next, primordial cyst from supernumerary teeth. It is more common in the posterior teeth. Next, diagnosis. Clinical diagnosis. Swelling posterior to the palatine papilla may give clue to the diagnosis. Radiological diagnosis. Heart-shaped radiolucency in maxillary anterior region is typical of nasopalatine ductus. Next, laboratory diagnosis. It is not specific. Management. Surgical enucleation. Its removal is not indicated unless there are clinical symptoms. Removal is indicated in edentulous patients before dentures are introduced. Intraoral approach should be taken for a surgical enucleation. Large lesions may need marsupialization which reduces the size and followed by enucleation. Recurrence rate is 2 to 11 percent. Complications of treatment include damage to nasal floor, creation of oronasal communication, fistula, damage to edge and teeth. Thank you everyone. Hope you all like the video. Please like, share and subscribe.